Our last step today is just to add in a couple of small lines, kind of some finishing touches. So we're gonna to get to use some fun little metallic markers to do that. In the roof, you do not have to do this, but some kids like to kind of give the look that there's like some wooden beams up at the top. So if you want to do that in your roof, whatever shape you have, whether it's a trapezoid or a triangle, you will draw kind of the same shape, just a little bit smaller with the brown marker. Starting in the middle, you will draw a line that goes straight up and starting in the middle again, kind of connects to the corners. And if you want to, you could even start in the middle and draw one more to kind of break that space up just a little bit more. If you wanted to do the same thing on your little porch, you could also do the same thing on your porch. You can also take your black marker and you're gonna draw the lines into your window. So you're gonna start by first drawing a square or rectangle that kind of matches the shape of your window. Now this one my tree's in front of, so I'm just gonna have to draw down and I'll stop when I hit the tree. Same thing here, this is kind of tricky. I'll draw down and around and I'll stop when I hit that tree. And then I'll just draw a little pane. So I'll draw my straight line, my vertical line, and my horizontal line to kind of make that plus shape. And you could do more lines than that. You could do two lines and lots of lines. It really is up to you. Okay. You can also use your marker just to draw a very quick little doorknob on your door. Next, we're gonna begin working on all of our trees. So to do that, you are going to have your paper from last time, and you're gonna start by cutting on all of the lines that you see. So I would start by taking your scissors and cutting on that long line up the middle. And then you'll take your paper and just cut on those two smaller lines. And it's gonna end up giving you about six kind of squares or rectangles. Don't worry about your name if you cut through your name because these are all going to be glued onto your background, which has your name on the back. Now, we've got a bunch of squares, but we need more like rectangles, or sorry, triangles. So in order to create two triangles out of a square, you are going to cut from one corner all the way across to the opposite corner. And if I cut from here to here, it will split my square in half and give me two triangles. Now, if you want just kind of straight edges, that's fine. But if you want more of like a wavy or kind of wiggly edge, here's how you will do that. You will open your scissors up really big and put your scissors all the way at the back. As you close your paper, you kind of just wiggle, or sorry, as you close your scissors, you kind of just wiggle your paper side to side. I'm closing my scissors really slow. I open them all the way back up, but I'm aiming for that opposite corner. I'm gonna wiggle my paper kind of side to side till I get to that opposite corner. And when I cut, I now have two triangles from my square. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to each of my squares. Some kids also noticed that some of my triangles looked a little bit smaller than others. If you want a few smaller triangles to kind of top your trees, if you hold a triangle so it's upside down, so it looks like a V, and I start at the corner, and I cut all the way to the middle, my triangle that is big becomes two smaller triangles. So if you want a few smaller triangles, you can go ahead and do those too, but I wouldn't do them all that way. You do want some big ones. I'll do just a couple. Now when trees grow, they do not start growing in the sky and grow down to the earth. They start from the ground and they grow up. So when you start to glue your triangles down today, you're going to start them in the snow and you're going to add more and more triangles and stack them as high as you'd like them to go. Our gluing is the same. I'm going to take a triangle. If you have some small ones, save those ones for the end. I'm going to take mine, flip it over. That way I can see the green when I put it down. And I'll make sure I just get a little bit of glue kind of in the corners and along the edges. And the very first one I do should be down kind of in your snow. So that one is in my snow. I'm gonna add another one. And this one, when I put it down, it should not just be teetering on the edge. I kind of want to 
overlap them so that kind of looks like the different tiers of a tree. So I'll put it over and I will put just a little couple swipes of glue on the back. And then again, I don't want it teetering right on the top. I kind of want to slide it down a little bit. That way it's overlapping. And you're going to do that as many times as you want so your tree gets as high as you want it to be. Sometimes in an artwork, it looks nice to have variety, to have some things that are taller, some things that are shorter, so they aren't all the exact same. So you can go ahead and start building your trees from the ground up. The final step that is optional is if you want to make it look like it's snowing in your wintry landscape, you will come visit the back station where there's going to be some white paint and a toothbrush. Your paper will sit in a box. You will kind of hold the toothbrush above your paper and just kind of pull on the bristles and it will flick a little bit of white snow onto your paper. That kind of gives this magical little feeling that it's just snowing outside. This part you do not have to do, but it's a fun little extra if you finish early.